Ah, uh, happy Sunshine family. Here is the verdict announcement call uh, with Sheila Corona. Uh, she is just fresh out of the courthouse with the verdict. And I'll let the phone call give you all the information. Hey, Danny. Hey, Sheila. I just got your message. Yeah, I I was a bit gobsmacked, by the way. We just got off the phone with BZ, but I wanted to, you know, since you and I were chatting when the verdict came in, I wanted to call you next. <clears throat> um, it's guilty on all counts for both parties. <laughs> They've They've been remanded into custody. However, Lisa and Katie weren't gobsmacked like I was, and I, I immediately started having those heart expansion pains. And, you know, you and I talked the other night, and unfortunately it didn't record, so we didn't get to put that out. But you and I know that our conversation was that all of this has been done on purpose to start seeding it into consciousness. And as we were walking down the hallway to leave the courtroom, Bill, or better known as Karen Cognito, turned around and said, well, I look at this like this. They're in protective custody for the next step. And the truth of his words went right through me. And through my whole body, I get a body rush. I... That's something that I've determined, I've begun to determine as uh, how I know truth. That and tears apparently is another way for me. And so I feel the truth of that. I think that that is a very big possibility, plausibility, and so I don't, I don't view this as some sort of a big blur for humanity or anything else. And actually, BZ didn't seem very surprised either. I mean, it seemed kind of odd to me. Again, I, I've not had a lot of experience with court, period, much less a federal court. But as the jury read, as the jury verdict was read, immediately following that, after the government said that they wanted to have Heather Ann Chichi Giraffe remanded because she was a flight risk. And, of course, they asked that she remain free pending sentencing. The judge read his... Yeah, he did. He even... He, well, he, we could see that he was reading a paper... And he quoted uh, several things from Heather's testimony from this paper that he was reading in regards to her being a flight risk. So this is not, as, as you and I discussed, and unfortunately it didn't get to go out to folks, but this is not apparently what it seems. I think it's, like I said, I think it's much bigger. I've, I've felt that it was much bigger all along. But I will say this, too. <laughs> There's another observation I made today. When we entered the courtroom, it was loaded. It was absolutely loaded. And there were U.S. Marshals standing up in the back of the room. There were, And the moment the verdict was actually finished reading, some of them uh, walked down the aisle to stand as though they were guarding the, uh, you know, the prosecution and whatnot or whatever. And there were some that were standing at the door and that sort of thing. And, you know, I just, uh, Parker still, of course, um, had to leave rather quickly. And I was like, man, I, I even said it out loud. I said, I was serious about that hog. And I turned to uh, Agent Jason Pack and I told him, I said, I, I really was serious about that hog. And I said, 
I, you know, I was, and he said, he said to me that he actually had another matter pending and that's why he had to leave so quickly. And I said, well, may I hug you so that you could pass it along to him? And, and besides, I wanted to hug you anyway. And he just kind of smiled and he said, how about if I shake your hand? And of course, I don't know if that's like protocol for them or whatever because none of them would allow a hug. However, every single one of them did allow a handshake and um, I made sure to put my other hand over their hand and look them in the eyes and I told them each individually that I was very serious and wanted them to be able to feel my heart and feel that I meant my words that I love them and that I appreciate what they've done, that all of this is in service to humanity. And, you know, they may think I'm crazy or whatever, but I know, I know, I know how I feel and I know what I wanted to communicate. So, and at least in a couple of cases, whether they really truly believed it or not, I feel that on some level, maybe not their 3D linear level, but on some level, I know there was at least a bit of a heart connection established. So, that's, that's, that's what I got at the moment. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. Lots and lots to un unfold and unpack here. Yeah. Um, and I think there's lots to come yet. Well, it's... I, I know how much time I have put into uh, looking at the paperwork from this whole case, and and I know that I would still benefit from you know, having Heather's explanation of the UCC paperwork. I was just in the middle of watching uh, your your video of uh, Randy Bean's closing statements. Uh, uh, and, oh, I just lost my train of thought, Sheila. Would you, would you bring me right back in? What, what? Yes, you were saying that you would benefit from Heather's... Um, Oh, okay. explanation of the UCC, but you were also speaking about being in the middle of watching Randy's uh, closing statements. And I know why you lost your train of thought, because you jumped to Randy's closing statement. And I am convinced no one will ever tell me any different. But that was a portal opening. And just his words alone were so huge for me that the moment I could get my hands on that, I knew I had to tone it. And I, I, I so encourage everyone to print that out. Read it for yourselves. Read it out loud. Listen to my video. Whatever you need to do for yourself because I really feel like that opened a portal. I feel that it's there for all of us. The expansion is going to just keep going and going. This is not, this is just the beginning. This is not an end. And there, and I will say this too, and I, I really want this to be heard. I know that there's a tendency when we think that something nefarious has taken place to say those rat bastards and all of that. And it's time for us to put all of that down now and and grab those rat bastards and hug them because they're part of this too. They're only playing their role. And they, yes, Katie just said they played it beautifully, and they have. And now we just need to reach out and scoop them up and say, okay, I get it. I get it. It's okay. It is okay. That is the most important thing in all of this, I feel. It's time. We want to claim that we're light workers and way showers. Well, by golly, it's time to belly up to the bar and 
put up or shut up. It's time to show what that compassion really looks like now. And everybody just say, I love you, and it's okay if you need some more time for this expansion to take place for you. It's okay. We got you. Hold that space open for you. I really feel like that is an important thing. But I want, and then here's another thing that I noticed early on, and I, I don't know if I, see, without, I'm out of my element here. I don't have my computer. I'm not, not very Android friendly, and I, I'm not Mac friendly. Yeah, Katie's got a Mac, and I got Windows, and I, so, I'm all out of my element, but I, I, I've got lots of stuff to share, and when I get home, there's going to be recording for, I don't know, hours and hours and hours. But something else that's really important that everyone who's been looking at this stuff for a long, long time to take into consideration. I noticed the very first day I entered into that courtroom, there was no fringe on the flag. That's important. Oh, the, it wasn't, what is that called, the Jolly Roger with the gold fringe. So, so that, it was just a, a normal flag? It was a normal flag with no fringe. <clears throat> wow, that's a There wasn't, huge and, and by the way, yes, there wasn't even a Tennessee state flag in the courtroom. There was only the American flag hanging, hanging behind the judge on a flagpole with no fringe around it at What's all. What's going on here? I'm telling you. What? I'm telling you this is bigger than we know. Wow. And it's big. I... I noticed that the first day, and I kept forgetting it, but I just it just flashed into my mind again, and I, I that's an important piece. I don't know. I might have said something, but I don't know if it was on a recording or not, and like I said, this has all been sort of surreal in one sense, and I just wanted to make sure that I got that out there and so before we all jump off the deep end and say well we're all screwed and we're going out on the handbasket and all that kind of crap I would say stop yourself allow whatever old paradigm is trying to push itself out of your cellular memory take a breath and recenter and give it, get, 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 give some of this a little chance to percolate around a little bit, like we've been talking about. I, I personally feel like um, this, this is this is just begun, and it's huge. Well, there's uh, most certainly going to be an appeal. Uh, I, 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 I would just guess. Um, I don't want to say certainly is going to be because I don't know, but I, I would guess that uh, uh, somewhere. I'm sure, there, I'm sure you're right. Somewhere in all of this, there's definitely uh, there's definitely something to to pull apart with all of it because you just uh, well back to back to what I was saying about the the UCC paperwork and how how quickly the jury came back with a verdict, how late the the UCC paperwork was finally admitted into evidence, but but with no explanation. And so what what my point was is I've spent so much time looking through that myself. Uh, trying to trying to piece together uh, my own picture of it from scratch, and and that's hard enough to do. And there's no way that that jury even inspected or respected the the UCC paperwork, which is the which is the underlying basis for for the entire ball of wax. So. It's certainly a victory that the UCC paperwork is admitted into evidence, um, you know, as far as the case goes. Uh, it, it would seem to me that the 
appeal then would be the place then where that evidence could then be used because now it's already part of the case. Right. Now, that's something that you and I, I am hoping we'll have a lot of conversation about because I, I suspect you're exactly correct in what you just said. I, I, like I said, you and I <laughs> had that conversation that, you know, obviously Source didn't want to go out before now, which I find highly interesting <laughs> and a bit synchronistic as well, because this is exactly what we were talking about, the fact that I suspected that all of this has been done in a, in a manner in which to seed the collective consciousness. Because how do you tell basically all the peoples in the world who a lot are still entrenched in a 3D linear perspective that they've been lied to for centuries? That would be so much chaos, it would not be a good thing. Well, it takes time to, to take a look at a facet of life, realize that the perception you've had about that facet's wrong, and then, hey, what, what do I, what do I plug into that void now in my view of reality, and and just to get on with a system where you're going to generate perceptions that work in your highest and best interest is. It's really tough to do, especially if you're fumbling around in the dark about it and you haven't, you don't have the light of how to do that. Right, exactly. So you're right. The fact that, and I mean, this was, by the way, those UCT filings were only allowed into evidence after the government decided they wouldn't object to the... I mean, they did a little bit, but it was kind of weak. And I was like, what? Yeah, well, I... But I think it was done on purpose, is what I'm saying. They were they were struck and struck and struck and struck. And then after the cases were arrested in chief, just prior, just prior, after the rebuttal, witnesses were allowed, just prior to closing arguments, the UCCs were allowed into evidence. And what does that mean? That means, A, they were put into the public record as evidence. B, it means the jury had them available to review. The fact that that was done just prior to closing statements. There, yeah, there was over there was over three hundred pages. There was no way they had a chance to look them over. There was no way. So, but again, it was a seeding of the consciousness. It's in the digital system. They that's what I'm saying. They're in the digital system. Well that all that too puts it into the field of the collective consciousness. And is now available for any of those who care to review. Who who are seeking out information at this point. It's um for me, it's it's another one of those puzzle pieces when you look around, you know, and you realize that a lot of uh, things that have been seeded into consciousness, okay, all the alien movies, you know, E.T., all of, all of those kinds of things that have been, you know, starting way back when, Buck Rogers and uh, Ultron and, you know, all, just all of those things from even way back in the black and white days 
okay, science fiction sort of thing? Well, maybe, maybe not. But it got everybody a little more comfortable with the idea. Right? And as, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of viewing this along those same lines at this point. You and I talked about that the other night, and I'm, after, <laughs> after the conclusion of this now, I'm, I, I, it's just made it that much more solid for me that that's what this is. So I uh, I think there's going to be lots and lots and lots of good conversation coming up about this, and I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you are. Well, I, I want to get my hands on these transcripts, and uh, and you know I, I just I just have a feeling that I'm, I'll have a lot to say about them, and and it'll be really nice that uh, there are so many of uh, well, so many angels that went there to the court hearings themselves that were plugged into the energy in that room and that, that'll be really important uh, resource for when I'm reading through the transcripts to be able to uh, ask you hey at this point you know and the uh, in the trial when this was going on, you know, uh, what, what's your take on this person's energy? And, and you know, that that kind of stuff will be really, really interesting. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, okay. Oh, my goodness. So, so we're going to meet up with, uh, with Bill and Judy, I think, this evening. We, our, our room was, uh, like I said, we were... We had a generous angel that made sure that we had our room through tonight. So I think we're going to take a much needed bit of a rest and then probably get on the road uh, tomorrow morning, first thing for home. But um, I wanted to thank you, first of all, for our conversation and just say I'm looking forward to many, many more. Yeah, well, you're you're very welcome, and thank you, and uh, and thanks for uh, the sacrifices that all, well, everybody that went down there to be present at the at the trial. Um, yeah, that was really a valuable gift to everybody to have your your eyes and ears down there. Okay, well, thanks, Lindsay. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll talk again really soon. And uh, okay. keep me posted of any new new information coming at you. Okay, we will, Danny. I appreciate you. Okay, all right. Much love. Bye -bye. Okay, much love to you. Bye bye.